In this episode, I'm going to show you how to start creating orders on MetaTrader 5 with Python. There's a few things that you need in order to complete this episode. The first thing is you need access to MetaTrader 5. Now, I've covered this in a previous episode and you can grab the link for that in the description. You also need to have access to a strategy of some sort. I covered the EMA strategy as part of the series, but you can absolutely use any strategy that you want. And finally, you really need all of those order details that make the whole thing work. You need to know things like your stop loss, your take profit, your entry price, whether or not it's going to be a buy stop or a sell stop. When you've got all of those things ready to go, head on for the rest of this episode. Here's what we're going to be doing for the next four episodes as we continue building our MetaTrader 5 Python trading bot. Together, we're going to be learning the best way to place orders on MetaTrader 5, but in a way that is safe and secure and is going to protect you from loss. Now, when we talk about building these orders on MetaTrader 5, there's four distinct steps that we need to go through, and I'll show you how to do each and every single one of them. The first one is to calculate your lot size, which can also be called the volume. This is what determines the size of your order on MetaTrader 5. The next thing you need to do is to check your order. Now, what this does is it sends it to the MetaTrader 5 server without being an order and checks it. If there's any issues that it comes up with, it can't check everything, but it checks a lot of things. And if there's any issues, it lets you know before you attempt to place that order. The third thing, as you've probably guessed, is to actually place the order itself. And I'll show you how to do that, but also how to catch some of the really, really common error codes that MetaTrader 5 can give you and where to go if you want to check out what they mean. And finally, we want to wrap all of those pieces together so that your MetaTrader 5 Python trading bot absolutely nails the order placement in a way that is fast, efficient, and safe. Now, I've broken this into four separate episodes so that you can zero in on whatever topic you kind of feel like is going to be the most helpful for you. So jump into the description below if you want to see the links to any episodes and let's continue. All right, as you saw from that previous section, there's four components to placing an order. In this particular episode, I'm going to cover the check order component. This component is really, really powerful because it allows you to catch some common errors that you often make when placing orders uh, and really catch them before they become a problem for the rest of your code. It's a great way to save yourself money from doing something silly, basically. Now, this is going to be an episode that's part one of two when it comes to this particular place order function. And the reason I've done that is really just to give each part of it a little bit of space to breathe. There's a lot to cover, and I want to make sure that you have all of the time you need to kind of get what you need out of this episode. So this particular one is going to be uh, setting it up. And then in the next episode, we'll go through and actually learn how to place the order. The good thing is, although it might take a little bit of time and code to set up, when this happens on MetaTrader 5, it is incredibly fast. Now, here's the details you need for your place order function. The order type, which is for our particular uh, series, is only going to be a buy stop or a sell stop. We need to know the symbol, volume, stop loss, take profit, comment, stop price, and whether or not it's direct. And I'll get into what that direct is a little bit later on. The rest of it, you should have got from the strategy, uh, and you should also have got the volume from a previous episode that I've linked in the description below. As always, with all of my functions, I put in the comments. Now, the order type is going to be a string. It can either be a buy stop or a sell stop. For more advanced traders out there, there are so many different types that you can do on MetaTrader 5. I don't want to cover them all in one, <laughs> one sitting. That would just take way too long. So we're just going to be doing buy stops and sell stops, sell stops rather. The symbol then is going to be a string of the symbol to be traded. The volume is going to be a string or a float of the volume to be traded. And the same thing for the stop loss, take profit, and stop price. 
Now, I put string or float there because we can, with Python, it's really, really straightforward to convert between the two. If you were using a more um, complicated uh, programming language, you would actually need to be very, very specific there. With the comment, this is a really easy way to make sure that you can trade different algorithms on the same account. That could be quite powerful if you've got an algorithm that maybe only makes one trade every month, but you know, high confidence, and you want to do a little bit of other more frequent trades in the meantime. The comment's a really easy way to filter through your trades while using the same account. It saves you having to split everything up. Now the direct is a Boolean. And what we'll do is we'll actually use this for a recursive function at later on in this episode and the next episode. So what I do when I start off in this function is I go through all of the um, numbers that come in and make sure they're formatted into the right type. That includes making sure they're rounded to the correct number of decimal places. And the reason for this is, is that when you're calculating these things, uh, through, whether it be through your data frame or however you've done your strategy, it's not uncommon for your computer to use its 64-bit integer power, sorry, 64-bit uh, processor power, and come up with this really, really long number because it has sort of like an unlimited, feels like, number of decimal places that it kind of gets the precision down to. Now, unfortunately for us, if you pass that full, you know, decimal um, uh, float off to MetaTrader, it won't actually process the trade, it'll give you an error. And so what we do here, just to kind of cut that off at the knees, is we go through and we just make sure that everything is formatted in the right type with the right number of decimal places. Now with the volume, I do cover this in the, um, in the lot size calculator episode, but I also wanna reiterate it here. When you get into doing your lot size slash volume uh, in MetaTrader 5, and you're getting down into the 0 0.01 lot sizes, if you're trading with a really, really small balance, that can really mess up your risk calculation. So please make sure that you're understanding the difference between the size of the trade that you're making and the uh, lot size that you want to calculate. If you want to get more information about that, head off to the uh, volume and lot size episode, which I've linked in the description. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to set up the object that we use to pass into MetaTrader for the actual trade. And we're going to call this request. The request is going to be a dictionary of values that ends up getting passed in. And we're going to be kind of working on that as we go through the place order um, process. <clears throat> the key information it's always going to need is the symbol. Then we need the volume. We need the stop loss, which in MetaTrader is called the SL. We need the take profit, which in MetaTrader is the TP. Okay, now we need the type time. In this particular series, I'm just going to set this as good till cancelled, and I'll show you how to manually manage that later on in the series. That can be a really, really cool way if you really want to get into high frequency trading. There's plenty of other options you can use, but this is just what I've set up for me. Then we have our comment, which is a great way to filter through different trades on the same account, uh, different strategies on the same account. And now we're going to create the order type based on the values. Now you can see in my code, um, when I've put in the type time, I've actually forgotten to put a comma 
uh, right after that. So uh, just make sure you fix that up in your code. And I apologize for that. Okay, so if our order type is cell stop, which is one of the two things that we'll be covering in this particular series, we can set the request type to be metatrader.order type underscore cell stop. Okay, now our action is the trade action pending. And all of this information actually comes from the MetaTrader 5 Python API, which I'll also link in the description. Now I put in a little sanity check here um, to, about the stop price, and I do this throughout. The, the reason is, is because uh, one of the common errors that I've found when I'm making trading bots is placing in a stop price of zero. It can be really easy to do that just when you're troubleshooting code and checking errors and that sort of stuff. This is just a really, really easy way to make sure you don't do something silly like that because it's kind of like a, a nonsensical value to place in. Rather than trying to get you know MetaTrader to reject it for you, it just catches it straight off. There's probably plenty of other common errors that you could catch there. I won't go through them at uh, this time because again, that would just take up so much time on the video, but it's just a really quick way to, to catch really common errors. Now we put in the second type of order type, which is gonna be a buy stop. And it's pretty much the same. Now that's all I do. You'll see the next part, I'm gonna put in an else statement to you know, raise an error but you could actually go through and specify different ways of processing every single different order type that MetaTrader 5 offers. And as a really advanced kind of platform with, you know, it's been around for many, many years, it's got plenty of different options for you. I certainly know in some of the bots that I've created, people use some really unique ways of, of working with these orders in order to kind of maximize their profits. So that's pretty cool. You can see this part of the function is pretty similar to the last one. So one of the reasons you might have a stop price of zero if you're thinking about that is if you're actually using a market value, technically your stop price is just gonna be whatever comes from the market. So the value that you actually pass to the function would just be your market price. And this allows you then by doing this if elif statement, uh, you can then pass the market value to your price, you know, halfway through the function. I don't cover how to do that in this uh, series, but it is a really cool way of trading. Okay, and there's my check again to make sure the stop price isn't zero. And here's my catch statement. Now, I'll cover this in the next episode when I talk about how to actually place the order on MetaTrader 5. But basically, to save ourselves a bit of code, we're actually going to create the function with a direct equals true or false statement in it. What this means is that if direct is true, we go through and we place the order. But in terms of the actual order process, when we're doing it kind of in the, in the most recommended way, we go through and we create 
the test order, we send it off to get tested. And when it comes back with a, you know, it's passed its test, then we can just pass it straight back into the same function, uh, but set in direct equals to tr true. And that'll make a lot more sense in the next episode. So for now, I've just put that in as a placeholder uh, and we'll come back to that in the next one. So let's check uh, the trade. So we get the result and we get metatrader 5.autocheck and we send that request object we've been working on. And that's gonna return us a couple of different things. Well, it's gonna return us a code result uh, which we'll go through in a moment. Uh, and if there's an error, it's going to tell us what the error is and why that occurred. <clears throat> Just be aware that this check does not cover everything. Uh, so there will be times where you place it, it passes the check, but doesn't pass the order itself. Uh, hopefully that won't cause you any issues, uh, but just it, this is just a really easy way to take care of the, I guess, the most common ones. So if the result is zero in the test function, in the uh, order check function, then it will return as it's passed. That is a true. And then we go ahead, like I said, and we're going to place the order by passing it back to this function that we're working on, but with direct equals true. Now, if the result is not zero, that means that we've had an error and it'll be really handy to tell ourselves what that is. There's going to be a couple of reasons for it and we can catch the common ones here to kind of tell us, you know, almost give us like a little prod, like, why did you do that? One of the errors is this one here. Now I've put in the code there as <clears throat> one triple zero one five. According to the code book, that should actually be one double zero one five. In the next episode, we'll take that order check and turn it into placing an order on MetaTrader 5.